Welcome to our today's class. Welcome to our today's class. That is the advanced financial management. Now, for today's class, I want to now finalize on the portfolio theory. Portfolio theory. And uh, now, well, in this case, we now introduce on this part of the film. We had introduced on the part of the film. Well, we were able to know uh, when we talk about the film, it does the required return of an asset. And this is when the company wants to achieve what we call a well diversified portfolio. We say that uh, in measuring systematic risk, here we use what we call the beta. And I say for you to get beta, you can get it by taking the covariance of the market and uh, that is the covariance of uh, the security and market. You divide by the, the, say you divide by the standard division of the market force square. Or we say you can get it by taking the correlation coefficient of the security and market multiplied by the standard deviation of the security. We also divide by the standard deviation of the market. Or you can get it by taking the change in security returns. Security returns. Security returns. You divide by change in market what? Change in market return. So that is how, in this case, you get the beta. Now, in this case, I also want to try more, uh, two or more questions on the same to see how, in this case, we can be able to determine how we can be able to determine the beta. So I want to use. Uh, the question is June 2009. June 2009. That is the question number one D. June 2009. Question number one D. When we see how in this case again, we can be able to determine the beta. How we can be able to determine the beta. In the sitting of June 2009, Question number one. Here. Now, June 2009, question one. Here. June 2009, question one. Here. Now, this is what the question reads that uh, the Awelo Investment Fund A has a total of 5 million invested in five stocks. The investment stock, we have been given the stock investment. We've also been given the stock beta coefficient. We have for A, B, C, D, E, and the risk free rate is 8%. percent we are in the market, have the following estimated probability distribution for the market returns. You are required, number one, to get the expected return from the market. Now, expected return, that is from one one. We say to get the expected return of the market will be just the summations of the returns of the market you want to have a probability, which in this case will be given by, we have the returns of the market down there, where we'll be given 10, 0 0.1, I've so just said 10, more by 0 0.1 plus, the other one is fellow, multiplied by 0 0.2. Plus, the other one is uh, 13 multiplied by 0 0.4. Plus, the other one is uh, 16 multiplied by 0 0.2. Plus, the other one is 17 to multiply by 0 0.1. So if uh, you want that, the summation of that, it will to give you the expected return for the market, which in this case will be given by how much? 
You're motivated by that. How much are you getting? So it is giving you thirteen point thirteen point five. That will be the expected return of the market. Roman number two, you are required to give the beta beta coefficient of the investment part. Beta coefficient. Now, the beta coefficient of an investment fund. This is how you get it. You just get uh, the weight of uh, A, the data of the portfolio investment funds will be given by weight of A, you multiply by beta of A. Weight of B, beta of B. Weight of C, beta of C. Weight of D, beta of D. And weight of A, or E, weight, beta of E. So weight in this case, you just get the investment, the stock investment in the first one, you divide by the total investment, which is 100. So the first one is 150, you divide by the total investment, beta of one was over what? Beta of one is 0 0.5, you add, the other one stock investment is of 120. 120 divided by the total investment multiplied by the beta, beta of two. Plus the other one is 80 divided by 500, multiply the beta of securities, uh, the stock A or C, which in this case is how much? Four. The other one is how much? Eight. Also, eight and five by five hundred. You multiply by beta is one, and then the last one is sixty. Sixty divide by five hundred. You multiply by three. So, how do you get the beta of the investment fund? So, it will be giving you how much? They give you how much? Give you how much? Yes, you're getting one point, one point eight. That is how you get the beta coefficient for the investment or fund. The other one also you are required to estimate efficient for the security market right. You estimate the equation for security market line. Security market line, this is the CAPM. And a CAPM, you say to get the return of the security, if the risk period, you add the expected return of the market minus the risk period, you multiply by the beta. Multiply by the beta. So in this case, you are given the risk period. So we'll do for each of the, the stocks. So I will have for here, which will be the risk free rate for Z plus expected return of the market we've gotten 13.5, risk free rate, beta of stock A was 0 0.5. That one will give you how much? Yes. How much is it giving you? 10.75 plus this is 8 plus 13.5 minus 8 beta of stock B is 2, which is given you how much? We give you how much? Check 13 minus 8, 13.5 minus 8, multiply by 2 plus 8. This one is giving you 19. Also, RC is 8 plus 13.5 minus 8 
What shall the beta of that which is formed, given you how much? Is 19.5.5 you minus h multiplied by 4 plus h. This is giving us that. Then d is also h plus 13.5 minus h multiplied by the beta, which is 1. And this one will give you how much? 13.5 minus 8 plus 8. This is 13.5. And then for the last one is 8 plus 13.5 minus 8 multiplied by the beta. Beta is of 3. So in this case, is 13.5 minus 8 multiplied by 3 plus uh, 8, which in this case is 24.5. And therefore, that is uh, what we call it the estimated equation for the security market line. The estimated equation for the security market line. Now, the last one is the invest, investment funds required rate of return for the next period. Now, the investment funds required, we know the beta of the investment fund. So you will still use the risk period of the CAPM. <laughs> you use the CAPM together, which in this case, the return of the security will be given by risk period. You add the expected return of the market minus the risk period, multiplied by the beta of the portfolio or the investment fund. And in this case, it will just be H plus. This is how much? You have that 8.5 minus the, bit, uh, the risk free rate H and the beta of that we had 1.0. 1.8, which in that case is giving you how much? Giving you how much? Should be 17.9. And that is how you do for that question. That is how you do for that question. That is uh, how, in this case, you do for that question. So the same question was just repeated in the same way. And that was in the sitting of uh, May 2018 question 2C. I remember this in my last class I gave you as an assignment. You will also do it the same day, May 2018. That should be question number 1C, 2C, sorry. Question 2C. Question number 2C of May 2016. I mean, May 2018, sorry. May 2018. May 2018. So that is uh, on that question. That is on that question. We can as well check whether we have also another one. Before now, we proceed to something else. So we have December 2013. 
Now, this is the what we were given there from that question. December 2013, question 3B. Now, X Limited has a portfolio of capital projects which yield an average expected return of 15% per annum. 15% per annum. The return is subject to risk. And this is estimated as a standard deviation of probabilities of the expected returns of 2.5%. Risk free rate of interest is 6% per annum. Three projects have been come up for consideration by the board of directors. And these are designed and designated M, N, and O. Details of estimates made for the for them appear below. We have the expected return, the risk, which is the standard deviation of the probability distribution. And then we've also been given the coefficient of variation of the project returns with what we call the portfolio returns. You are required using the capital asset pricing model. You advise X Limited on the project to accept or reject. On the project to accept or reject. And this is using the capital asset pricing model. Now, in this case, uh, there are some things that we love to get in this, this one. When you look at this, when we're using cafe generally, when using CAPEM to get the return of the security, you are supposed to get the risk-free rate. You use the risk-free rate to get you, you add the expected return of the market to minus the risk-free rate, more tried by the beta. In our case, we don't have the beta. And when you look at the beta, we've been given the correlation coefficient, meaning that I will get the beta by getting the odds. Correlation coefficient of the security and market multiplied by standard deviation of the, the security divided by what we call the what? We divide by standard deviation of the market. So this is what I'm saying here. We will have uh, the portfolio here, so the project, sorry. So I will have the project here. Project. I will have the expected return, which is ER. I will also have to look for the beta. Beta. And beta in this case, you will just get the correlation coefficient between the security and market, multiplied by the standard deviation of the security, by, by the standard deviation of the market. We'll also have uh, this one now, we get the re re return of the security. Which I will use the CAPEM, where in this case is the expected return of the market minus the risk free rate to moderate by all beta. And the last thing that you love here is the comment. You love here is what we call the odds. The comment. The comment. So we begin with the first one, which is M. What was the expected return from that? We've been given the expected return of M, which is 10. Remember, there are three of them. Remember, we have three of them. There is M, N, and O. Expected return for this one is 10. This other one is what? H. This one is 6. Now, we've been given the Coefficient of uh, the coefficient of correlation of project returns, 
with the portfolio return, which is our population coefficient, which is 0 0.58. When you look at the, <coughs> the risk, that is just the standard deviation of the portfolio return, which in this case you are given as one. And then the standard deviation of the market you have each up there, where you are given that, um, you are given that the standard deviation of probabilities are expected to be 2.1, 2.5 from the parameter. So I divide by 2.5. So this will give you how much? What will be our beta? What will be our beta? Yes. Get 0 0.1. 0 0.23. So in this case, if it's 0 0.23, get the, the risk return of the security. Which in this case, it will be risk free rate, which you are given as six. Expected return of the market, you are given the average, which was what? 15. We have it on the first paragraph, which was 15, minus the risk free rate. We have it here. And then we also have the feature. This will give you how much? How much is it giving you? Mm -hmm. 8.0, 8 8.07. Now, this is what we will compare with this. Let me have this down here. This is what we compare with this. Now, if the expected return is greater than this, the return of the security we say that the security is said to be undervalued, and therefore it is efficient. I mean, it is super efficient. When it is super efficient, in that case you do what? You are there. When the expected return of the security is less than the return of that security, then in that case it is said to be inefficient, and therefore it is overvalued, and therefore you will get. Let's get to the second one. Now for the second one, the, this is eight. So this one will be how much? The correlation coefficient for this one is uh, 0 0.8, right? Multiplied by the return, the standard deviation, which is 1.2. Then you, multiply, you divide by that of much, which in this case, it will give you how much? 0 0.89 you multiply by 1, is it 1.2 or 12? This should be 0 0.89 multiplied by 1.2 divided by 2.5, which is 0 0.43. 0 0.43. So this will be 6 plus 15. Minus six now we multiply by zero point four, which in this case uh, it will give you how much? Zero point what? Multiply by that. This is giving you nine point eight seven. And this one, when you look at this, this is less. Therefore, in this case, it will. Since the security is overvalued, means it is an inefficient. Last one here, we have six percent. So this uh, correlation coefficient is negative zero point one. Multiply by two point four. Five by two point five. We give you a beta of how much? We give you a beta of how much? So it will just be how much? 0 0.1, that is 0 0.1. You multiply by 2.4, then you divide by 2.5. This one is 0 0.090. 
zero point uh, zero nine six. Zero point zero nine six, sorry. Zero point zero nine six. The correlation coefficient have been ignored because uh, mainly we say the correlation coefficient you can get it as positive or negative. Negative, we say that the security will be said to be negatively correlated. However, in that case, you just have to ignore the negative. So this will be 6 plus uh, 15 minus 6, you multiply by 0 0.096. With this one, we give you how much? We give you 5.0, 5.16. Therefore, when you test, 5.136 is the uh, expected return is greater than this, and therefore you do you are there. And that is how you are required to do for that question in order to have the six marks. In order to have the six marks. And that is uh, all on that part. Before we even finalize on the part of that. Uh, the Let's talk, just talk about the distinction between CAPEM, portfolio theory, and CAPEM. The distinction. Distinction between portfolio theory and CAPEM. Distinction between portfolio theory and CAPEM. The difference between portfolio theory. Theory. This other one is what? Capital asset pricing model. One is that uh, for the portfolio, it deals with total risk. With total risk. What you mean in this case? We're talking about it dealing with undiversified work. Portfolio. What I mean in this case is you only do those uh, the, 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 the risk that can be minimized or diversified by holding our portfolio. Now, this one deals with only systematic risk. Deals with systematic, systematic risk. That is uh, for the, 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 for the, Capel. Now the other one, this one, this one uses the CML equation, capital market line equation. But for this other one, it uses the all, uses SML equation, the security market line equation. That is also another distinction. Now for this one, rate, risk is measured by the UC standard deviation, risk is measured. Measured using standard deviation. Standard deviation. But on the other hand, risk is measured using the beta factor. It's measured using the beta factor. Beta factor. Risk is measured using the beta factor. Now, this also, we say that the standard deviation of the market is not equal to one. Standard deviation of the market, of market is not equal to one equal to one. But for this one, beta of the market, beta of the market is equal to one, equal to one. Beta of the market is equal to one. And those are the distinction. Those are the distinction between those two. Those are the distinction between the two. Another thing that we also need to talk about is uh, what we call the arbitrage pricing model. 
bitrate pricing model bitrate pricing model so we cannot get to this other one here a bitrate pricing model now, this one was uh, developed out of uh, the limitations of CAPEM. Remember, CAPEM, uh, CAPEM assumes that uh, is, there is only one factor that affects the security, which is just the market. But there are other factors that can affect security's returns. Like we have inflation, we can also have the interest rate and so forth. So a different pricing model was developed out of those limitations of CAPEM, where CAPEM in this case would uh, assume that it's only one factor that affects the security prices. But there are other factors that can affect what? Security prices. So you write and say, this model was developed. This model was developed was developed out of limitations of CAPEM. Out of limitations of CAPEM. Limitations of CAPEM. Out of limitations of CAPEM. Unlike, uh, unlike CAPEM here, or this one, we talk of it being a multi factor model. It is a multi multi-factor model. So as I say, this one assumes that there are other factors that can affect the security returns other than what we call the what? Other than the market of uh, the price of that security. So let's talk about the assumptions. 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 Assumptions of arbitrage pricing model. Number one, they assume that the capital market is perfect and efficient. Capital market is perfect and efficient. Capital market is perfect and efficient. Number two, it is also assume that uh, investors prefer assume that investors prefer more returns. Investors prefer more returns. The last one is that the return of the security is generated through continuous buying and selling of what? The security. The return of the security. Return of the security is generated. Generated through buying and selling of the what? Buying and Selling of the security of the security through buying and selling of the security. Those are the assumptions of that um, of the payment. So you, I mean arbitrage pricing model. So in this case, what we mean here. Get the return of the security will be given by the risk free plus factor return of the factor one minus the risk free rate multiplied by beta of factor one plus the expected return of factor two two minus risk free rate multiplied by beta of factor two plus up to expected return of what? Factor N, risk period, beta of factor N, beta of factor N. 
data of factor n. So you just indicate there and say that the theory argues that changes in securities, the theory argues that. I want to write that, you can write. The theory argues that. The theory argues that. Changes in security returns is influenced. Changes in security return is in, influenced by other factors. Other factors. Other factors, not as sensitivity factors, which include other factors known as sensitivity factors, which include known as the sensitivity factors, which include sensitivity factors, which include number one, the interest rate changes, interest rate changes. Political risk, political risk, political risk, energy crisis, energy crisis, inflation rates, ETC, inflation rates, ETC, inflation rates, ETC. So we can have an example, can have an example to see how we can prepare for the same. Can have an example to see how we can prepare for the same. November 2019. November 2019. November 2019. November 2019. That is the question number three C. November 2019, question number three C. Now this is what we've been given there, or what we've been told. The Joe Patien, an investor, believes that there are three important factors that determine the expected return for a particular common store. Job uses the following factor beaters and factor risk premium. Where we've been given the factor, factor beta and factor risk premium. We've been given there that uh, the risk free rate is 5% and you are required. The expected return for the top using the arbitrage pricing model or theory. So you see the LPFT or arbitrage pricing model, we've said it will be given by the expected return will be given by a risk period and expected return of factor one minus risk period. Multiply by beta of factor one, expected return of factor two, more minus free spirit, multiply by beta of factor two, plus expected return of factor three, free spirit, multiply by beta of factor three. Now, when you take this expected return minus the risk period, I say that is what we call the risk premium. So in our case, we just be taking the risk premium. So I'll just have a 2.5. I mean, I'll just have the risk period, which is five, plus expected return minus the risk period is the risk premium, which is just 2.5, I multiply by a beta, 0.7, plus, the other one expected return is five. The risk premium is five to moderate by 1.2. The other one is uh, six to moderate by a negative 0 0.1 for the feature. 
So this one will give you out. Give you how much? Five plus two point five you multiply by zero point seven. Plus five you multiply by one point two. Plus six you multiply by negative zero point one. So this is twelve point one five. Twelve point one. That is how you get for that value. So that is how you get the expected returns using the pen. Using the pen. So that's it on that question. Uh, you will uh, also do the, the, the question in December 2014, question two, as a sign. December 2014, question two, as a sign. Now, the Roman two of this question is uh, asking for the difference between a PEM, the differences between the PEM and uh, what we call the uh, B series pricing model. So we can just have the differences. A PEM. This one is what? A B series pricing model. Now, one of it is that for CAPEM is a single factor model. This other one is a multi factor what? model. So, 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 it is a single factor model. Is single factor model. This one it is a multi factor model. Multi factor model. We also say it is a, multi, a single period, single period model, single period model. This one it is a multi period model, multi period model. And the last one you can say this one uses AG, the securities follows a normal distribution, but for the others, they are not useful. Security returns follows a normal distribution. Follow a normal distribution. Distribution. Security returns do not follow returns. Do not follow. Follow no The other one it uses in different in different terms. This one, uh, it does not use different curves. It does not use a different curves. So can write that. It does not use a different curve. Remember, we talk of it using a different curve to measure the individual, the utility of an individual investor. When we are measuring the utility of individual investors, we can use a different curves. But in this case, you cannot use. So that is a, all on that part of a bit rate pricing model. Now, the last part, last part of this topic is our portfolio performance ratios. Portfolio performance. For your performance measures, for your performance measures. Now, generally, we want to talk about the methods that we use when evaluating the performance of uh, our portfolio. Methods that we use in evaluating the performance of uh, our portfolio. 
That is what we will uh, be talking about in that part. You no, know, which are these? Uh, there are four of them. Measures that we use um, in measuring portfolio performance, and mainly we know which measure they use. Is it the standard deviation or is it the beta? Is it the standard deviation or is it the beta? So I just write and say, you are just write and say on that. There are several methods used. There are several methods used in measuring or in evaluating the performance of a portfolio. There are several measures used in evaluating for the performance of a portfolio. Evaluating the performance of a portfolio. One is uh, we'll talk about what we call the sharp ratio. The sharp Portfolio performance measure. Portfolio performance measure. Number two to be what we call the trainer. Trainer. Number three is what we call the Jensen Alpha. Jensen Alpha. Number four is what we call the the arbitrage in appraisal method, or what we call the information appraisal method. In other cases, we talk of it as information ratio method. Information ratio method. Information ratio method. Information ratio method. So after that, we can begin with the sharpest portfolio performance ratio. Portfolio performance. Sharpest portfolio performance. Now you can just indicate and say this indicates the percentages is the percentage of excess returns. This indicates the percentage of returns generated by a portfolio. Excess return generated by a portfolio. Above the rich pre rate by You divide by the standard deviation of uh, the portfolio. Standard deviation of uh, the portfolio. And then you also get the sharpest of the market, which will be given by the expected return of the market minus the risk free risk. You divide by what? The standard deviation of the market. So this will be for the portfolio. portfolio. And this is our market, which is now the what? The baseline. That will be our baseline. And therefore, if the sharpest for the portfolio is greater than the sharpest for the market, this one indicates a superior or superior performance. 
If the sharpness of the mark of portfolio is less than the sharpness of the market, it indicates inferior performance. And then if this one is equal to the sharpness of the market, now this one it is uh, what we call the uh, we talk of it as efficient performance. Efficient performance. Efficient performance. Efficient performance. Now the other thing is uh, on uh, what we call the, the other thing is uh, on what we call the trainer portfolio performance measure. Trainer portfolio performance measure. Trainer. Portfolio performance measure. You see, this indicates this indicates this indicates the percentage of excess returns, percentage of excess returns generated by a portfolio. Generated by our portfolio, generated by our portfolio over the risk free rate of return, over the free rate, uh, free rate per unit of the risk, over the risk free rate per unit of the risk, as measured by the beta, as measured by the beta. So, to get a trainer for the portfolio. Will also be the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk free rate. You divide by the beta of the portfolio. Trainer for the market, which is now our benchmark, will be given by the expected return of the market minus the risk free rate. Remember, beta, you have to divide by beta of market, which is always one. So that one will be that way. Don't have to divide by beta of market. Beta of market is equal to what? One. The other one is Jensen Alpha. Jensen Alpha. That is number three. Jensen Alpha. Jensen Alpha portfolio performance. Jensen Alpha portfolio performance. See, the method uses alpha to measure, the method uses alpha to measure the portfolio performance. Method uses the alpha to measure the portfolio performance. Now, to get the alpha in this case will be given by the expected return of the portfolio minus the return of what? The portfolio. And in this case, uh, for us to get the return of the portfolio, here we have to use what? The pen. Where this one will be given by risk free rate plus the expected return of the market minus risk free rate to what level by the beta. That is how, in this case, you do that. So, for this one, for the Jensen Alpha, you Look at whether it's a, a positive or greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, that is superior. If alpha is less than zero, this one is inferior. If alpha is equal to zero, that is efficient. Or you can either look at whether it's, uh, this one is uh, expected return is greater than this, it will be superior, less than this inferior, and also it will be efficient. Then the last one, the last one, the last one is, last one is uh, what we call the appraisal method or in 
appraisal uh, method or what we call the information information ratio method information ratio information ratio level see this measures the average this measures portfolio average return this measures portfolio average return this measures portfolio average return in excess of benchmark in excess of benchmark portfolio in excess of benchmark portfolio so this one will be given by the alpha you know how to get alpha it's just the expected return of the portfolio minus the return of the portfolio you divide by the non systematic risk the non systematic risk the non systematic risk so we can have an example we see how in this case you require to do all that and i'll just do the last sitting question last sitting august 2022 that should be a question about question 5 of august 2022 August 2022, question number five, C. August 2022, question five, C. August 2022, question five, C. Now this is uh, what we were given from that, that uh, Online information relates to the performance of three portfolios. We have a BC during the year ended 31st, 30th June 2022. We have the portfolio, we have average returns, we have the standard deviation, and we also have the covariance of portfolio returns with market returns. Of variance of portfolio returns with market returns. Market return and the risk free risk average to 14% and 7% uh, respectively during the year ended 30th, June 2022. Standard deviation of the market will be given there. We are required, required to Evaluate the performance of the three portfolio using the sharpest portfolio performance measure. Using the sharpest portfolio performance work measure. So how do we get that? Now let me first begin with the sharpest, sharpest portfolio performance measure. So we begin with the A. We get it by taking the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk rebate. We divide by the standard deviation of the portfolio. So for A, we have the expected return of the portfolio is the average return. We are given 17.4, 17.55, given 17.55, 17 
multiplied by minus the risk period. Risk period we were given. Risk period rate of return is how much? Seven percent. So I minus seven. And the standard deviation of that portfolio is that the standard deviation of that portfolio is that. So it will give you how much? Well, well, seventeen point five five minus seven. I by that. This is zero point three five. The other one is for B. You also do the same. The, the uh, expected return is 13.6 minus 7 by, by the standard deviation, which is 13. oh, 13.26 minus 7 by by. By 34, we give you how much? 13.6 by 26 minus 7 by, by 34. This will give you 0 0.18. 17. We have uh, for this one is how much? 9.34 minus 7. Divide by the other one is 28. This will give us how much? 9.34 minus 7 divided by 28. This is 0 0.08. Then I love the benchmark here. The benchmark, this was trainer, the surface for the portfolio. Benchmark is just for the market. Surface for the market is the expected return of the market. Minus risk privilege to divide by what? Uh, standard deviation of the market. So this is our The expected return of the market you are given. Market return is 14%. So I take 14%. Minus 7. Standard deviation of the market on additional information was 10. So this will be 14 minus 7 by 10, which is 0 0.1. So if it is greater than uh, this, it indicates for the superior performance. And therefore, when you look at all of them, these are inferior, they are less. Inferior performance. This is also inferior. This is also. Inferior. This is because when you look at this, the surface of the portfolio is less than the surface of the market. And that is why our decision is that. That is for Roma number one. We get to Roma number two. We are now the owners. We use the trainer. The trainer. So we begin by getting the trainer for the portfolio. Trainer for the portfolio is supposed to be given by the expected return of the portfolio. Minus the risk free you divide by what? The beta of the portfolio. Now we have the beta in our case. We were given only the covariance of portfolio returns with the market returns. So how do we get because we have in the covariance? We have in the covariance. So this means that. Since we know the portfolio here, I love the portfolio here. Right?
Now this is what I'm saying. We need to get the first the correlation coefficient. After getting the correlation coefficient, it will help us now to get the beta, which in this case we now be able to get the what? We will now be able to get the trainer. So yeah, I think I can do it from this side. You have written on this side. Let me just do it on this side. Trust to understand what I'm trying to mean here. So this is what I mean. For the trainer, for the trainer here. Trainer. We know trainer for the 40 point, it will be given by the, the expected return of the portfolio minus the risk period you divide by the beta of the portfolio. We don't have the beta. And the what we've been given is the covariance. So what will happen in this case, we will uh, first, I will have first the portfolio here, portfolio. Then we'll also need to get the correlation coefficient between the security and the market, which should be given by the covariance, the covariance of the security and the market. You divide by what? The standard deviation of the security multiplied by the standard deviation of the market. Then after we get that, we can now be able to get the beta. Or we can use the covariance instead of uh, we can just do it direct. Let me just get the beta direct. You can get by taking the covariance of the security and market divided by the standard deviation of the market watch square. You can just have it that way. You can just have it that way. So that you can now get the trainer for the portfolio, which should be given by the expected return of the portfolio. Minus the risk free rate you divide by what? Yeah. Instead of first getting the correlation coefficient, I can use the first formula. That is the covariance of the security of the market that divide by the standard deviation of market square. We have two, three portfolio, which is ABC. Now we have the covariance of the first one. We've been given that the covariance is 0.0088. So I will take 0.0088 divided by what was the standard deviation of the market? Standard deviation of the market you are given as 10. So I divide by 10 square. 10 square. This will give us how much? Remember this is zero, it's just like 0 0.1, multiply by 0 0.1. So it will be equal to how much? So I will just say 0 0.0088 divided by 0 0.1, multiply by 0 0.1, this is giving us 0 0.88. So after getting 0 0.88, we know the expected return of the portfolio. We add is a uh, 32.17 points, 17.55. Minus the risk free rate equals seven. Then you divide by the beta of the portfolio, which we've gotten 0 0.88. Which in that case, this one will give you how much? This will give you 17.55 minus the risk free rate, which is seven, then you divide by 0 0.88. This will be 11.99. You also do the same for B. The covariance is uh, 0 0.0750. 0 0.0750. This was uh, 13.26 minus 7, 
you divide by 7.5, 13.26. Final 7 divided by 7.5. This is 0 0.83. And then you also do for the that one, which will be being given by 0 0.021, 0 0.021, 0 0.021. You divide by also the same standard deviation of the market square. So it will be 0 0.021 divided by 0 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.1. This is giving you how much? 0 0.2, which in this case it will be equal to how much? This will be the expected return of the portfolio. Which is 9.30, 34 minus 7 divided by 0 0.21. So 9.34 minus 7 divided by 0 0.21. This is 11.14. So you can now get for the benchmark. Benchmark is now for the market. And China for the market. We say is the expected return of the market minus three four, which is just 14 minus seven, which is seven. So if it is greater than seven, in that case, it will be superior. So this one indicates what on the comment, I would say this is what superior. This is inferior, and this is also superior. Because it is greater than what? If uh, for the portfolio is less than, is greater than that, that is to be. If it's less than that, this is what? In and that is how you are to get the eight marks on the same. The eight marks, you are to get them that way. So you will do. Uh, you will copy that and you do the question in May 2017. This should be May 2017, question number one. May 2017, I think should be question two. Do that as assignment. When now we come in our next class, we now do another topic of uh, advanced capital budgeting. So allow. You have any question? Or we proceed from there. 